It's a really genuine pleasure of mine to take you through this course, Logistics Management. And we are going to begin by going through Model 1, which is an introductory model. It is just going to give us a general overview of logistics management. In this session, we are going to look at what logistics management means and also how it fits into the overall concept of supply chain management. We are also going to go through its evolution or how logistics management has developed over time and the key logistics activities. Now let's take um, a look at a very simplistic definition of logistics management according to the Council of Logistics Management. In their definition, they say logistics management is that part of the supply chain process that plans, implements, and control the efficient and effective flow that is both forward and reverse flows and storage of materials or goods, services and related information from the point of origin to the point of consumption for the purpose of conforming to customer requirements. Now, when we look at this definition, you would fundamentally appreciate that logistics management is a part of the whole supply chain process of ensuring that goods flow from the point of origin to the point of consumption. And so when you look at the beginning of the definition, it tries to just make us appreciate its scope. And the scope of logistics management is within the whole framework of supply chain management. That presupposes that supply chain management as a concept is broader than logistics management. So once we are going through the supply chain process of ensuring that goods and services flow in the entire supply chain we find logistics management playing a key role in doing that and then the second aspect of the definition emphasizes the managerial function of logistics management and that means that as a managerial function logistics is tasked with the responsibility of planning implementing and controlling that really means that none of the logistics activities is carried out without any form of planning. For us to engage in the activity of logistics, we will need to devote ample time in the planning process. For example, we cannot ship goods without planning how goods must be shipped. For example, if we have to select a particular mode of transport, we will need to go through a whole planning process in order to consider a lot of issues. For example, when we look at some strategic decisions regarding the location of facilities or warehouses. Usually management will have to go through a lot of planning. And by planning, we mean that logistics anticipate the future of logistics activities in order to prepare the, the present to face such conditions. And having planned your activities, there would have to be an implementation process. Logistics is also, you know, a part of the managerial function of implementing the various standards or plans that are the output of the planning process and also as part of the whole managerial function of logistics there needs to be a whole controlling process and by controlling there must be constant monitoring and evaluation of various activities within the logistics function to ensure that these activities go according to the standards that have been set in our plans so that in case there are any form of deviations it will take the management in charge to ensure that corrective measures have been put in place. Therefore, we understand that logistics activities are not carried out appositely, but there needs to be a systematic process involving planning, implementation, and controlling of the various activities. In our definition, it also highlights the fact that there are flows within the logistics system, and at some point in time, we also see a storage within the particular system. That is, we see items flowing through the entire supply chain, whether it is a forward flow or it's a reverse flow, 
and then at some point in time we see the storage of the various flows and examples of these flows include material or goods what come together to form what we call the products we also have and the products also of course include the services that is the intangible product or the goods and then related information and what we are saying is that these flows or storages of these flows within the logistics activities must be done within sorry in a very efficient and effective manner efficiency means that there would have to be a lot of cost controls you know in efficiency it emphasizes the judicious use of resources or the maximum use of resources logistics encourages that throughout the process you manage to ensure that waste is actually reduced or avoided if possible because we already have learned in economics that resources are limited in supply or are scarce yet our wants are insatiable in other words they keep on coming every time they are unlimited yet the resources to meet them are limited you will need to make a lot of effort to control the various costs in logistics in order to ensure that we have been able to make maximum um, use of resources. And what is also said is that not only do we achieve efficiency in the entire process, we need to make sure that the processes that we are going through or the flows and storages are being managed effectively. By effectiveness, what we mean is that we should be able to ensure that every right thing we expect to be done have, have, has actually been achieved. For example, if we are shipping products, we need to ensure it's effectively done to ship the right kind of product. And the product must arrive in the right condition. They must be sent to the right location, um, plus other rights we are going to look at um, later as we, we proceed. So within the logistics, as we are managing through the planning, implementation, and controlling, we are ensuring that it is done for the purposes of efficiency and effectiveness. We need to ensure for both efficiency and effectiveness. You can be very efficient and not necessarily effective, but you need to ensure for both. You need to make maximum use of resources, but you should ensure that you are engaging resources to do that which is expected of the whole process to achieve. Remember, we are saying for both forward flows and reverse flows. In the whole logistics process, we know goods or services and other flows move right from upstream to downstream but there are cases that we see goods moving you know from downstream to the upstream and that is what we call the reverse flows they happen for various reasons such as defective issues um, or let's say poor quality products that have been produced or when items have been sent to the wrong locations the locations we see this product being reversed through the whole process whether items are being sent from upstream to downstream or being reversed throughout the system or let's say within the entire supply chain, we see the reverse flow. It is essential that we achieve both efficiency and effectiveness. Likewise, when goods are in storage, it is not always that we see that goods are continuously flowing, whether through transportation or through materials handling. But at, that, at some point in time, it becomes very important for us to ensure that goods have been stored. So there are warehousing of goods and it's also essential to ensure that goods really move from upstream to downstream. Whether items are flowing continuously or they are in storage, what logistics management seeks to do is that these are being done efficiently and effectively. And it also the definition also makes us appreciate that throughout the process, logistics management is not just restricted to one organization or an just the internal organization's activity but right from the point of origin to the point of consumption of the supply chain logistics management is part of the process and the overall purpose of logistics management is to conform to customer requirements in other words it is the customer's priority that influences logistics activities how logistics is carried out all the activities of logistics they are not carried out for the purpose of just achieving, you know, the individual unit objectives. But these objectives must be aligned with customers' priority. 
And that is why it is important for us to understand what customers prioritize so that logistics management would also be carried out to conform to that. We have already understood in business management that organizations exist to meet customer requirements. In other words, organizations exist to solve the problems of customers. That is why all functional areas must also be managed or carried out to conform to customer requirements. We already know that in logistics, we are, being, um, we are managing the logistics process um, based on the marketing orientation that says that we need to satisfy the customer and that the customer is the major reason why we are operating. Therefore, in logistics management, we do all the things that we have to do within the entire process in order to meet customer requirements. And I think this is a very good definition given by the Council of Logistics Management. And it is going to guide our discussions in the subsequent periods as we look through other you know, models in the subject area. Now, what are supply chains? A little recap from what we did last semester concerning supply chain, concerning strategic supply chain management. In our class, we studied that the supply chain is a network of organizations acting together to fulfill customer orders. We understood from economics that within the market, there's an interplay of demand and supply. And we know demand emanates from customers and supply also emanates from organizations. What we need to understand is that the supply that we talked about in economics, it is emanated from various organizations. And these organizations come together to form what we call the supply chain network. So when we say a supply chain is a network of organizations acting to fulfill customer's order. So the order is what specifies what the customer requires. But organizations must exist to meet it. But it doesn't take just one organization to meet the requirement of the customer. Why? Because for us to get the finished good, different organizations would have played different roles in order to ensure for the finished product to the consumer. The supply chain thus encompasses all activities associated with the flow and transformation of goods from the raw material state to the end user, along with the associated information flow. So all the activities that are part of the entire transformation process of the goods, right from the point of origin, as we noted, to the point of consumption is what um, come together to form the supply chain. It's a chain of suppliers, or what we call the network. All different organizations are playing different roles in order to get the final product to the consumer. Remember that usually the items that we need or consume come in, um, would have, you know, would have been formed out of raw materials. But for us to get the finished product, we see different organizations adding value from one state to another beyond just the raw state of the product. And all these organizations playing different roles come together to form what we call the supply chain. And so this is a very simplistic diagram. You realize that for us to get a laptop, you see a laptop consumer, for example, um, before we had the laptop, different organizations had to play different roles. And as the item was moving from one state to another, we see different organizations adding value from one state to another. All these organizations come together to form what we call the supply chain. So when we look at this diagram also, it's also another simplistic illustration of what the um, supply chain means. So within the supply chain, we can broadly say that we have sources of supply and all these sources of supply pass through various plants or operations with items that they supply and these plants or operations would also add value to the raw space as they have been received so that the final consumer will receive the finished product in the state that he requires of it and that is it is going through the various stages we see value addition even including the warehousing and transportation so within the diagram we see various tracks and warehousing organization also playing essential roles all these organizations come together to form their supply chain so there is also another diagram to show the major components of the supply chain within the supply chain we can 
broadly categorize them um, the the components to be the suppliers the manufacturers we have wholesalers or distribution centers and then we also have retailers and then the final customers or the consumers or who are also known as the end consumers and they actually consume the product without necessarily using it to further production and that is the end of the supply chain so this is a whole supply chain network It's a network because they are part of the whole chain they interact together to ensure that the product is transformed into the state that the customer requires the product to be for consumption now in this diagram we begin to appreciate the complexity of the supply chain though it appears simple there's complexity because at each stage of the supply chain we see so many components playing different kinds of roles so we see that as for example when we take the retail stage we see that we don't necessarily have only one retailer but we have a number of retailers likewise when we get to the wholesaling stage we also see a lot of wholesalers now when we go to the upstream beyond the manufacturers for the first tier we see a couple of suppliers when we go to the second tier we also see a number of them that shows that in the supply chain it can be really complex depending on the particular product or service in question and this complexity makes us appreciate that without um, very good planning in place without very good implementation and control systems it can be very you know difficult and highly chaotic to manage the entire flows within the logistics system and we all have already noted that logistics management is part of the supply chain process and being part of the supply chain process we need to appreciate the complexity of the supply chain to know that within the logistics management we have to plan things to solve these complexities for example if you're a retailer you might be dealing with hundreds or thousands of retailers at a time likewise retailers can also be dealing with thousands or millions of customers at a time so how do you ensure for the flow process remember in our definition we have emphasized that within the flow or storage we must ensure they are being done efficiently and effectively um if we are facing this kind of complexity how do we ensure that things are being done efficiently and effectively and these are all things you will need to consider when you are managing the logistics system now when you go to the next diagram this diagram makes us appreciate even um a, a deeper level of complexity deeper level in the sense that we see a global supply chain so a global supply chain presupposes that we have different parties or organizations or institutions in different parts of the globe or the world and so uh, an organization may be producing in a place like china for example but it may have other plants in different places it may be europe or america and we could have it that organization at the same time might have retailers and consumers scattered around the world you might be supplying to different you know countries around the world maybe about 100 countries and all this makes us appreciate the complexity in the supply chain and the need to put you know strategic you know means in place in order to achieve both efficiency and effectiveness in ensuring for the flows and then the storages of items within the supply chain and so there is a typical example of um, a supply chain network that is global and by a global you know supply chain we need to appreciate deeper levels of complexity not necessarily um, because it is covering a larger geographical area but also as we move from one location to another we see a lot of complexity coming because of differences in economic systems in differences in social issues differences in cultural issues differences in technological issues even the legal frameworks across the globe differ from country to country that means that as we are crossing geographical borders or boundaries, we will need to be well acquainted with the differences of course in order to develop strategies to deal with that. That means that with such complexity, logistics must also be managed strategically to deal with the complexities within their supply chain. Yet, I would need to also emphasize at this point that though we see a lot of complexities in the entire supply chain, 
for which logistics management must develop a lot of strategic options. There are also a lot of opportunities within the global environment, which has really, which have actually allowed organizations to to actually develop the organizations or exploit their capacity, especially their excess capacity, by producing beyond what their local or domestic market would need. So that after they have produced their excesses, they could also sell in other you know, markets within the globe. We are going to look at global logistics as one of the models. And during that time, we are going to see a lot of reasons and opportunities you know, we, um, that uh, a lot of reasons why organizations are actually, you know, going global and the various opportunities that they are tapping from the global marketplace. We also understood from our strategic supply chain, you know, supply chain class that um, supply chains are now a source of competition. We argue that now the real competition is not company against company as has traditionally been understood in many many years you know in the past but in today's competition we have understood that now the competition exists um, um, between um, supply chains not company to company but the supply chains so for example when we say mtn is competing with Vodafone, the understanding now is that it is the entire MTN supply chain that is competing with Vodafone supply chain. When we continue to hold on to the traditional understanding of competition existing between companies to companies, we will miss out and lag behind in the whole competition. Because now organizations or less leading organizations are actually, you know, using, you know, their whole supply chain to compete with other supply chains. And most of them have become global leaders. So now the competition, the real competition is between supply chains and other supply chains. And not just company by company. And we understood also that because this competition is supply chain against supply chain. Now it, it makes a lot of, you know, signs that suppliers or less a partners within the entire supply chain come together or collaborate in order to develop very good strategies for their supply chains in order to compete with other supply chains. So you need to be, you need to develop what we call a supply chain strategy and not just um, an organization strategy. If you have an organization strategy, it must all align with the entire supply chain strategy in order to compete very well with other supply chains without which you are going to lag behind in the competitive market. All right, so going back to the issue of um, supply chains becoming a source of competition. Now, it would mean that if um, logistics management is part of the whole supply chain process, then logistics must also be managed in order such that it will align with the supply chain strategy. That means that Having defined your supply chain strategy, logistics must be managed in line with the supply chain strategy. For example, if the supply chain emphasizes efficiency, logistics must be managed to emphasize efficiency. Also, if your supply chain uh, strategy emphasizes responsiveness, that will make sense that your logistics management is also managed to emphasize responsiveness. You cannot choose cheaper modes of transportation when your supply chain emphasizes response, um, responsiveness, all things being equal. I'm saying all things being equal because of the trade-offs among the various components of the logistics system, which we are going to discuss later in module 2. So you realize that in managing your logistics management, you have to understand it's your whole supply chain that is competing with other supply chains. And just as a strategy is always developed as a way to compete, then logistics must be managed in line with the supply chain strategy in order to allow the supply chain to compete very well with other supply chains. Logistics cannot be managed in isolation. It has to be managed in line with the supply chain strategy in order to achieve fit in the market. We have already emphasized earlier that 
In order to develop your supply chain strategy, you must first understand customer priorities. Then organizations will develop what we call the competitive strategies. And these competitive strategies are also reflective of customer priorities. And having developed such competitive strategies, you need to develop your supply chain strategy in line with the competitive strategy, which also is reflective of the customer priority. That means that a supply chain strategy also is reflective of your customer priority. Remember that supply chain also exists to fulfill customer requirements. Therefore, every strategy of the supply chain must be in line with customer priorities. And once you have developed a good supply chain strategy that is in line with your competitive strategy, then all other issues related to supply chain must be managed in line with the strategy. And of course, as logistics management is a part of the process, it has to also emphasize the supply chain strategy that has been developed by a particular, you know, firm. All right. Now we, we, we looked at the definition of supply chain management. And for example, Hanfield and Nichols defined supply chain management as the integration of all activities associated with the flow and transformation of goods from raw materials through to end users, as well as information flows through improved supply chain relationships to achieve sustainable competitive advantage. Over here, what I want to emphasize briefly is the integrative approach we apply to supply chain management. Remember, we are saying that there's a network of organizations who actually fulfill the customer you know, request. Because there's a network, we look at how we can synchronize the entire system. Hence, the integrative approach. You want to integrate the whole system and make it as though it is one. The more we see fragmentation within the entire supply chain, the more difficult it is to meet customer requirements, right, in a very competitive ma um, manner. And so in supply chain, we are emphasizing an integrative approach. Therefore, logistics management also emphasizes integrative approach. And the more we get the entire system integrated, the more opportunities we have in order to meet customer requirements in a very competitive manner. In the definition to it says that in order to achieve a sustainable competitive advantage, we are not looking at short-term you know, gains. That is why within the entire supply chain, we look into the future to anticipate and understand how the future would be in order to prepare the present conditions to meet it. And so what we are saying is that for issues of sustainability, we need to be more strategic or forward-looking or we have to look at long-term gains and so within logistics, we are also going to look at some strategic decisions that we look at. We are looking at sustainability. We do things not compromising, you know, the, 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 the future generation's ability to meet their own, you know, needs. So today we try and meet our needs, whether economic needs, social needs, environmental needs, we try to meet it. But whilst trying to meet these needs, we do not compromise you know, future generations' ability to meet their own needs. And that is why throughout the logistics process, sustainability is also a key consideration. Remember, in our definition of logistics management, we emphasize the issue of efficiency and effectiveness. We want to be very efficient and make maximum use of resources. Because of sustainability issues, we need to also be effective. So we are looking at having a competitive advantage not just to miss short-term gains. No, we are looking at having a competitive advantage that is sustainable. That is something that we can really enjoy from in the long term. And in the long term, we are not supposed to compromise future generations' ability to meet their own needs. All right, so the other definition also by Lambert also says that supply chain management is the integration of key business processes from end user through original supplier that provides product services and information that add value for customers and other stakeholders. So this also shows that the integrative approach is very essential if we need to meet all stakeholders' objectives within the entire process. All right, now having appreciated 
how logistics fit into the overall process of supply chain, we need to also begin to appreciate the origin of logistics. That is where logistics management originated from. So we can say that logistics activity is just literally thousands of years old, dating back to the earliest forms of organized trade. The concept of logistics started many years before Christ and was used by Greek generals. All right, so the term was used to describe all the procedures for the army's procurement of food, clothing, ammunition, and all other essential, you know, products that the army required. And so when you look at the term logistics, many people know it is associated with the military or the army. And so we know that when it came to their procurement of food, clothing, and munitions, they used the term logistics to describe the whole process or procedure. So for many years, logistics was always an issue in war affairs. Kingdoms and generals with strategic planning on logistics were those who won, you know, the war. So you realize that for most, you know, for most kingdoms and generals who won the war, many believe that it was... Um, it was partly or significantly because they had actually very good or strategic logistics processes and so that enabled them to, you know, do well during these, you know, wars. All right, so in World War II, it was the major motivation for logistics to increase recognition and that is so because they realized that most of these armies were able to win the battles because of their logistics procedures for the acquisitions of, you know, various supplies for, you know, their war activities. And so many people began recognizing the importance of logistics. You know, traditionally, most people have focused in other areas of businesses like HR, finance, marketing, accounting. And most people or organizations did not know much about logistics. But during that time, Logistics began, you know, receiving a lot of recognition. And starting from the early 60s, many factors such as deregulation, competitive pressures, information technology, etc., contributed to the increase of logistics science in the form we now know it to be today. All right. And we are going to look at these issues in further details as we move on to this slide. That is the factors impacting the development of logistics. Like I said before, military logistics development also, you know, increase the recognition for the development or increase the recognition of logistics. We also see transportation deregulation. We see competitive pressures, information technology. We also see channel power and profit leverage playing a role in the development of logistics management over time. So when we take military logistics, for example, as I said earlier, during the World War II, we see that after the World War II, we see that logistics began to receive increased recognition and emphasis. Why? Because I have already explained that those who won battles or the world were seen to have had very good logistics procedures in the acquisition of various supplies of, let's say, ammunition and various, you know, products or even medical products that they required. In the Persian Gulf War in 1990 to 1991, for example, the ability to efficiently and effectively distribute and store supplies and personnel were key factors in the success of the U.S. armed force. All right. And so when we talk, take the issue of distribution and storage of supplies, we know that these are key logistics activities. Distribution is a key activity of logistics. And your ability to distribute goods efficiently and effectively obviously will be key to the successes of these, you know, military, you know, organizations and also the storage of them. For example, by effectiveness, if you are able to ensure that your missions arrive on time, obviously it will be an opportunity for them to win battles. And you know that it is their competitive weapon when we are looking at the army from that perspective and also the storage of supplies to make sure that we are able to uh, meet you know the quantities that are required at a time that they are needed is also very essential even the methods that we put in place in the storage process to ensure that the the quality issues are still achieved 
so that we don't record issues of damages, spoiling, shrinkage, of solicits are all essential in the, in the in the entire process and how we handle materials. And all these are key components of the entire logistics system. And all we are saying is that most of these organizations or these military forces were able to efficiently and effectively, you know, distribute and store their supplies and personnel. And that actually contributed significantly to their successes in the battles that they went through. So as we see how they are distributing their goods, we know that, for example, the sea is the sea is one of the modes of transportation. And how you manage the timeliness at all can really influence your success. For example, if you don't manage the shipment very well and goods don't arrive on time, even where it passes through is all part of the logistics process of managing your shipment. And if we're able to ensure that, um, obviously it will play a very key you know, role in the success of these organizations. Now let's look at transportation deregulation. Transportation deregulation and how it also played a role in the development of logistics management over time. So deregulation of the transportation industry in America, Europe and other places gave organizations many more options and increased competition within and between transportation modes. Obviously, when there's deregulation, then it means that we are allowing just the interplay of demand and supply mainly to control the market. And you know when there's the demand and supply are actually playing the key role, then we see how competition will increase amongst various organizations. When there is um, de um, when there is regulation, or when we say the market or an industry is regulated by government, we know that who enters and who exits is purely the decision of government. And during that time, or under the issue of regulation, we usually do not see much competition because there are few who are engaged in production or supply. But when a market is deregulated, that is allowing so many people to just come in and others, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is no legal framework. No, it is just allowing demand and supply to have the market regulated. And so during transportation deregulation, we saw that a lot of careers were actually involved in the whole transportation industry. It allowed, it allowed for a lot of you know, organizations um, to, to spring forth who were providing transportation services. So careers therefore became more creative, flexible, customer-oriented in order to succeed. Obviously, when you have a lot of suppliers in the market, usually what we see from our economics understanding is that it tends to become buyer's market. And buyer's market would mean that a customer would have, you know, a relatively higher power than suppliers. And so he begins to dictate. And having many suppliers would mean that you will need to be very innovative or creative in order to have a very good share of the market base. Otherwise, customers having substitutes obviously will choose the best substitute in the market. And that would mean that if you are not careful, you would have to go out of the market or lag behind very badly. And so careers becoming more creative meant that they needed to find innovative ways in order to compete very well in the market. They needed to find ways of becoming flexible. And by flexibility, developing strategies or building capacity that can easily adapt to changing situations. Obviously, when we have competition, you know that there are a lot of factors that influence, you know, the change in demand. Beyond price, we have issues of income, we have issues of even the related price of other commodities, or the prices of related com commodities, whether they are substitutes or they complement each other or what have you. And even when we see technological changes, all these factors influence the, the quantities that, you know, customers demand. And so, and we also know that the other factors, even concerning behavioral issues and even social and cultural issues. And all these factors cause a lot of uncertainties in the market. And so, for careers to compete, they will need to build their capacity to make them more flexible. Hence, building their transportation, you know, services to become more flexible, to adapt to the changing situations 
Because if you don't build flexibility, other competitors will take advantage of the opportunities in the market. And most of these also became customer-oriented. By being customer-oriented meant that they focused on meeting the demands of these customers, what the customer wanted, and not necessarily what they could do at a time. So they were finding more ways to, you know, make their transportation services more customer-oriented in order to succeed. All right. And so that is the essence of it. And you see, as they began to become more creative, they, they began exploring a lot of opportunities in transportation in order to meet their customer demands. And you know that transportation is a key area of logistics. So the more creative you become in an area, the more you are able to explore, to know the opportunities in the entire area. So people began to see the opportunities in logistics for organizations to tap from in order to compete within the market. The more flexible they become, the more customer-oriented they, be, they, 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 they became, the more they were able to, you know, see the opportunities in logistics. Hence, many people recognize the importance of logistics. And we saw a lot of development. More creativity meant more innovations. And the more innovations, we saw various, you know, opportunities within the area coming forward. Now we can even understand that currently we see a lot of innovations within our transportation system. Now we are moving into the intelligent transport system and it's all because of competition. Then it was not so. So the different modes of transport, we even see so much innovation across the various modes, whether in terms of road transport, in terms of sea transport, in terms of the pipeline. Look at the, the West African gas pipeline, for example. Why is this coming up? It's all because of competition. When we look at, you know, the air transport, and we also look at the real, each mode itself um, is seeing a lot of innovations today. And we are seeing massive development over time. And the more creative they become, the more people begin to appreciate, you know, logistics management as an area or an area of discipline. All right. All right. So transportation deregulation has really contributed significantly to the development of logistics management over time. Now, competitive pressures, of course. Competitive pressures, you know, has also become one of the ways, and it is still one of the major ways actually um, influencing the development of logistics. Why? Because now we are not just facing domestic competitions or local competitions or even national competitions. The competition has even moved beyond what we call international to become globalization. So globalization has actually even um, built, um, um, influenced, you know, the competition to see so many different issues coming up. So local firms competing with overseas firms means necessarily that most organizations need to keep on exploring for innovative ways of competing within their marketplace. And as they keep on exploring in the various fields, including logistics, they keep on seeing a lot of opportunities within the area. For example, increased offshore buying and selling activities, more complex and more costly global supply chains have actually influenced a lot of organizations to develop a lot of strategies in the field of logistics. How do you buy you know, from the global markets without going through so many difficulties? How do you also sell products within the global market without going through too much difficulties? Or how do you achieve visibility in a very complex global market through logistics, you know, strategies? Now you see how we are, we are seeing a lot of development in even tracing products and even tracking. Now we see a lot of tracking devices being developed and tracking software is being developed to enable a lot of logistics activities to go on with higher levels of visibility. So now because competition keeps on rising and the fact that this competition has even become global, organizations have been forced to explore into more strategies. And as these pressures are putting, you know, uh, as the competition is putting pressures on organizations to explore um, um, explore various strategies in order to make them competitive. 
they are beginning to recognize also a lot of opportunities in logistics in order for them to compete in the global market place. So with rising interest rates and increasing energy costs, logistics receive more attention as a cost driver, which um, with emphasis on cost control. Now, during, when competition was not very fierce, there wasn't much complaints about, for example, energy consumption. But now, with so much competition and the fact that we see so much, you know, transportation moving up and down, goods and services from one local area to other local areas, regional areas to other regional areas, national and even within the global marketplace, we see that there's high consumption of energy. So obviously, there has been an increased attention on how to reduce costs. Increasing en energy costs within the area of transportation has also put pressures on organizations to find ways of reducing costs. And as they, they keep on finding these ways, they begin to explore a lot of ways, um, let's say, um, logistics innovations in order for them to reduce the cost of transportation. For example, there have been various ways of consolidating. We look at the artificial intelligence system coming into play in order to reduce costs in transportation, yet achieve high levels of uh, flexibility within the system. Are all parts of the logistics, you know, innovations that they keep on exploring because they want to find a way to reduce energy costs. And we also see rising interest rates. And so most organizations want to find a way to reduce costs. And they have really understood that one of the major areas of cost that presents opportunity for cost reduction is logistics. You already know that for most organizations, logistics can contribute about 40 to even 60 percent of their entire cost of you know production, especially for industrial products or tangible you know production. And so they realize that your ability to explore innovative ways of producing or applying logistics strategies can actually be an opportunity for you to reduce your cost of operation. Now, information technology too has become one of the key areas that has um, one of the key areas that has actually you know influenced the development of logistics management over time. Now, we even say that information technology itself is an enabler of you know logistics you know development because the more we see development in information technology, the more we see opportunity. To develop the area of logistics. Now, if we can achieve high levels of flexibility in our transportation, it is so because tech, um, information technology is enabling, you know, a lot of applications in that area. Likewise, either other uh, computerized quantitative models for controlling and optimization functions. For example, we say there has been increased visibility through IT through the development of what we call the MR, MRP systems, the DRP system, the JIT, and various you know, inventory control systems and even forecasting models, enabling high visibility in the area for cost reduction and also for flexibility within the entire process. As IT keeps on developing, certainly organizations will see more you know, you know, opportunities in logistics in order to implement for them to become competitive. Now, channel power too has become one of the major driving forces of the of organizations to develop a lot of logistics strategies. Because traditionally, we saw that power was more concentrated at the manufacturing stage of the supply chain because there were a few, you know, there were few leaders or brands. We saw a lot of brand power within the entire you know supply chain or let's say in the in most markets or industries but because competition keeps on increasing and the fact that this competition has even become a global competition now we saw we see a lot of suppliers of products manufacturers of products and because of this most you know leading most brands have actually lost their brand power and once the brand power is lost, manufacturers no longer have as much power to influence the market or the entire channel as it used to have, you know, in the days of monopoly. 
And now, because we see a lot of manufacturers, you know, producing, and we see lots of products with so many substitutes on the market, the power keeps on shifting towards the downstream. And now, when you look at the major channels before the consumer, you realize that now retailers have the most power because they are the last point of contact between the entire supply chain and then that of the consumer. So your ability to get your products available, you know, at the retailers, you know, organization on point uh, at uh, on time will actually provide the opportunity for you to compete in the market. And you realize that to provide the product on time or to make it available at the place that is required, at the time that is required, it will mean that most organizations have to utilize logistics strategies. I've already emphasized that distribution is a key aspect of logistics management. And so your ability to manage your distribution and even your shipping function very well will actually influence how you are able to get your product on the, um, on the shelves of the retailer on time. And we already know that when brand power lo when brand loses its power, one of the major determinants of, the, of purchasing is actually availability. It goes just beyond price and quality because when competition is fierce, we see that leading brands are behaving like merely substitutes. And when leading brands are behaving merely like substitutes and their prices and quality levels are essentially the same, then obviously the major determinant will move beyond price and quality to factors such as availability. And by availability, that means that those who are able to bring their products and services to the market on time are those who are able to compete very well in the market. And to do that, means that organizations must keep on exploring opportunities that lie in logistics in order for them to provide such utilities. All right. Then we look at profit leverage. We know that as competition rises, there's what we call, you know, profit squeeze. That is usually there's a continuous decline in prof um, profitability over an appreciable, you know, period of time. That is when you stick to traditional ways of doing things without changing to, you know, to adapt more innovative ways of competing. And so in, the, in, 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 in many years ago, when organizations began to see that their profits were, you know, were reducing constantly over time, they began searching for other areas of businesses in order to improve their profitability. And having exploited a lot of opportunities in traditional areas of businesses, they began seeing opportunities in logistics. And as I said, logistics, you know, cost can constitute even about 40 to 60 percent of your entire cost of production. So that a one dollar savings in logistics cost would usually have a much more greater impact on a company's profitability than just a one dollar increase in sales. Why? Because once you have increased your sales by a dollar, it does not necessarily add to profitability by one dollar. But reducing your cost by one dollar would mean an increase in profitability by one dollar because the cost is a function of profitability. And that is why organizations keep on finding ways of reducing their logistics cost. Now we see a lot of you know quantitative models that are being developed to control various costs in transportation in inventory, in warehousing, and so many other areas of logistics. All this effort is directed towards reducing the entire cost of production in order to increase the profitability of various firms. Now, let's look at the five rights of logistics. When we are talking about being effective, it means that you need to manage your logistics system to actually you know, emphasize these rights. That is, making sure that you are able to ensure the right products are being are flowing through the entire supply chain so the consumer must receive the right products once there are products that are available you must make sure that what is being sent to the consumer or the different you know parties within the supply chain is actually what they specified so you can ship items on time but not necessarily being effective because when you ship items on time and you have not shipped the right thing, 
you may have to go back and bring you know the right product which would mean that more time has been used to shape the product and so once you are shaping items in logistics you need to be very careful to shape you know the right item this becomes very important when you are dealing with multiple products or variety of products if you are not careful to use the right systems in place you might be shipping the wrong products to the wrong consumers and we emphasize from the beginning that are both forward and reverse flows in the supply chain sometimes items flow backwards not necessarily because these items might be recycled or must be used as assets for let's say for further production or for subsequent production but it's just merely because the wrong items have been shipped and that adds cost to the entire logistics you know process you also need to ensure that the right place is where the items have been sent to consumers have their own specified locations you need to ensure that you are meeting the locations and that is why for example in transportation usually you need to be very careful about your routine and your shipping um, your scheduling i hope you get to, to make sure that you are able to go to the right place that the customer requires uh, uh, for the delivery of products and also we say the right time so both the utilities the place and time utilities must be achieved Having sent to the right place is not adequate. Having sent the right product is not adequate. You need to ensure that not only have you sent the right product to the right place, but it has to be shipped to the consumer at the right time. Any delay can cost the, the organization significantly, especially when there are lots of substitutes on the market. You might lose the sale of the product because of delays, you might lose the consumer who is highly dissatisfied. It can tarnish your reputation, which is very important because your reputation is an asset. And when your reputation is being tarnished, it can affect your competitiveness. And sometimes because of delays, consumers who do not buy or get dissatisfied can also communicate your poor performance to other potential clients. And that means that you can lose other clients in the future. And obviously, we know other, you know, effects on, you know, your competitiveness. And that is why you need to make sure that in logistics, you are managing the entire process to ensure that the products get delivered at the right time. It has to also be in the right condition. And that is why you have to be mindful of the careers you select, how you go through, even the routes that you are using, even the package involved. Because when goods arrive and they are in bad condition, they can easily be rejected. And it is just unnecessary cost within the entire process. And that is why these days we emphasize you use the right packages, you use the right carriers, you use the right routes, you have to use the right material handling tools and equipment in order to ensure that the products which arrive at the customer's site are of higher con or our good condition because they have specified their products and the products need to arrive in the right condition as the customer requires it to be then the right cause is essential remember in our definition we also emphasize the issue of efficiency we are saying the right time but it doesn't mean you manage it anyhow and send it at the right time at any kind of cost whilst ensuring for these rights you have to manage the course in the system. And that is why you need to be very strategic in the way you go about with the logistics activity. Sometimes organizations are very smart to do a lot of consolidation in order to achieve a lot of economies in transportation. And all these are opportunities that are available. Whilst ensuring for the right time, is there opportunity to consolidate your goods in order to achieve economies in your transportation? Um, all these are important in achieving the, and in ensuring that the products arrive at the right condition you need to invest in the right packages but how do you manage your packages if you are not mindful of the cost you you might also achieve too much you know you know um, higher cost in the system which would also affect your competitiveness so you need to make sure the right product is being sent at the right to the right place at the right time in the right condition but also achieving the best minimum cost 
we also want to achieve optimization in all that we are doing. Hence, the development of these quantitative models to assist, um, you know, logistics practitioners to control cost within the system. Now, let's look at the scope of logistics management. So, within the business. So, logistics and supply chain in a business primarily aims to achieve maximum customer service level, ensure high product quality. So, achieve maximum customer service level means that customer service is essential. Beyond the tangible product you are sending, can you add value? And value addition, for example, lies in your ability to reach the customer on time. If the customer wants a product, to what extent are the products available? So your ability to have high product availability during the time demand is recorded is also part of the customer service you want to achieve. It is also very essential. There are a lot of elements in customer service. For example, the convenience with which their customers can experience in ordering their products. How convenient is, it, it is for consumers to deal with you in terms of ordering for their products. What kind of processes have you put in place to ensure for the convenience? Or what kind of environment have you built to ensure for the convenience? So within the logistics or supply chain you know, framework, businesses aim to achieve maximum customer service level. And this is very, very important because I've already explained that when you know there's fierce competition, brand usually will lose their, uh, their, their brand power. And if they are losing their brand power, it means that usually consumers' decision to purchase a product will be influenced by availability. And customer service is one dimension that ensures for the availability of your product or it's a measure of how well you are you are performing in terms of providing such availability and then it also ensures for high product quality all that we are doing we want to ensure that there's high product um, quality and that is why for example in the procurement of goods and services you ensure that you are sourcing from the right suppliers if you have very poor you know raw materials it definitely would affect the final product. So logistics contributes very significantly to ensure that there's high product, you know, quality given to the consumers. And especially as I have noted that competition has become global now, even in the local market, we are seeing a lot of, you know, foreigners in the market who are competing with the local producers. Your ability to compete fiercely lies also in your ability to produce high quality products. You need to also ensure for high product availability. And this is where you need to manage your transportation very well and all your distribution function also very well. Because the kind of transportation mode you choose, for example, can influence how products will get to the market on time. High product availability is a strong measure of customer service. Customers who actually experience a stock out, as I have noted, can easily, you know, easily choose other you know suppliers products that have become substitute to your product you need to also manage to achieve you know minimum possible cost within the system that is what we call optimization in the entire process and of course optimization should not compromise on customer service likewise customer service should not compromise on your optimization objective and then we need to be very flexible to the constant market changes we live in a market that is very dynamic. We keep on seeing the changes in the market, especially changes even coming from the demand. We see so many factors causing these uncertainties, like even the changes in, in the incomes of customers, technological changes, economic changes, social cultural issues, the legal framework. There are so many changes that come about from the customers themselves and from the whole, you know, you know, economic environment or the marketplace. And so how do you manage your system to be flexible? And I've already noted by, by flexibility, we mean building a capacity strong enough to easily adapt to the changing situation. When you find it difficult to adapt to the changing situation, 
other competitors can take opportunities in the market and leave you behind. And so you need to build a strong system. But you need to be very strategic because usually the more flexible you are, the more capacity you might have built and the more cost you incur in your operations. And so you need to find a way of being flexible without necessarily increasing cost. And that is why now a lot of people are investing a lot in IT because IT is one major way of driving the whole supply chain positively without necessarily increasing so much of capacity cost. And so logistics management must balance two basic strategies, quality of service and low cost. You know that usually as you want to increase the quality of your service, you incur more cost. Even while the logistics also exists to emphasize efficiency. So how do you become efficient and at the same time, how do you become responsive? This is a challenge and this is where we need to make a trade-off. And that is why logistics must be managed to align itself with the supply chain strategy. Because you know that having looked at the customer priority to develop your competitive strategies, the logistics strategy is also developed in line with that. And definitely your strategy will emphasize more of an aspect than an aspect, whilst not necessarily compromising on that. So what your customer prioritizes will influence where you also emphasize as a strategy. So that if customers emphasize so much of service, you will need to also emphasize service. It would mean that the rational consumer is ready to pay for that. Likewise, if your consumer emphasizes efficiency, you need to emphasize so much of optimization. But quite apart from that, you will need to put in your best to achieve some level of customer service and also an appreciable level of optimization in order to compete fiercely in the market. Now, let's look at the key logistics activities. According to Stock and Lamb. There are 14 key logistics activities in every organization. And these include customer service, demand forecasting, logistics communications, inventory control, material handling, order processing, parts and service support, plant and warehouse size selection, procurement, packaging, reverse logistics, traffic and transportation, warehousing and storage and also we have the um, salvage and scrap disposal so according to them it means that when you go into every organization these constitute the you know the major logistics activity or these activities mainly constitute you know the logistics function so briefly tackling it as we proceed in other modules we'll be looking at some of them in detail but you know that in other courses you are also looking at others in detail. So at this point, let's begin to have a brief overview of each of these key, you know, logistics activities. So customer service is one of the domains we say that it is one of the determinants of customer satisfaction. We have already understood from marketing that there are four elements. Um, there are four elements in the marketing mix, right? Which we call, we commonly call as and uh, we commonly refer to as the four piece. That is the product, the place, the price, and then we have the promotion. All these four come together to satisfy the customer. That, you know, essentially means that one of them is not enough to satisfy the customer. When we take these four elements, that one which we refer to as the customer service is the place element. And that is what interfaces between marketing and logistics. So the customer service that we put in place leads to customer satisfaction. That means that customer service is not necessarily equated to customer satisfaction. You will need the other elements as well. But in the domain of logistics, customer service is one of the areas of log logistics activities that, are, that is implemented to achieve customer satisfaction. And so we say it is the output of the logistics system that is it measures how the logistics system is performing in terms of providing both place and time utility. So we say that how are you performing in getting the right product to the right customer at the right place in the right condition at the right time and at the lowest total cost possible. It is the customer service that measures the total output of the logistics system. It is one of the major 
measures of the logistics system. So the key trade-off here is between the customer service and the cost of lost sales. So we know that usually if your customer service is high, then the cost of lost sales also goes low. And then if your customer service is low, then the cost of loss of sales will also what, usually go you know, high. But the problem is that the more customer service you put in place, all things being equal, your cost also would go high. So what do you do? You need to be very strategic in providing an appreciable level of customer service. An example of customer service activities, as I mentioned, actually includes convenience in making an order and even your product availability. A high product availability shows a higher level of performance in terms of your customer service because a high you know, product availability level means that your stock out level is also low. And customers are very happy when they meet a lot of products available in your, in your organization in order to buy from or choose from. Now, logistics communications, it's, um, it's a vital area within the logistics process that links all the various partners because within it, we've already emphasized that within the entire supply chain process, we've emphasized that it's just, you know, a network of suppliers. So if it's a network, they need to be integrated. And it is information that actually links them together. So effective logistics communication is a key aspect of successful logistics management. And now we know communication keeps on, you know, getting more and more complex over time. And hence, a lot of investments have been made to, to, to make information very, very flexible in order to allow for high level visibility within the entire supply chain. Now we see a lot of investment in IT to allow communication to be done in a most effective manner. Because we have always emphasize that the information being sent among the, um, the players within the supply chain should be very valuable. Information must be accurate, it must be timely, it must be very visible throughout the process it has to be, you know, it has to also be devoid of errors. It has to be accessible. It has to also be protected. You should even be able to be able to verify for itself. And how do we do that? And that is why now organizations keep on investing so much in IT to enable that. When your supply chain partners are not well informed, the activities cannot be done effectively. We understood from, you know, um, um, strategic supply chain management that when suppliers are not collaborating to ensure for free flow of information that is of high quality, then they are going to achieve a lot of variability across to an extent that now we know of what we call the blue hip effect, which means there's going to be a magnification of the variability of this other information as we move up the supply chain. And this actually help the entire supply chain process to reduce profitability. When information gets distorted or delayed, it actually magnifies the entire variability, which we refer to as the blue wave effect. And we've already understood from previous lessons that the blue wave effect usually would increase cost in manufacturing, inventory, and other forms of operation. And it also increases the replenishment lead time, which means that it makes it difficult to compete in the market. And especially when your suppliers are very timely in terms of the availability of their products, you are going to lag behind in the market. And that is why the area of information, logistics information is very essential to ensure that all the players within the entire supply chain are well informed and they are also adequately informed. So we see organizations like Walmart making a lot of investment in information systems in their supply chain processes in order to enable them to become both efficient and effective. And then we also have demand forecasting as one of the key activities of logistics. And over here, we say there are many types of demand forecasting. For example, in marketing, marketing usually will do forecasts concerning customer demand based on promotions, pricing, competition. And based on that manufacturing, they also forecast production requirements based on marketing sales demand forecast and current inventory levels. Therefore, in the logistics too, there is also forecasting. Logistics involved in forecasting in terms of how much should be ordered 
And that is the procurement aspect. When you are ordering for products, you need to make, you know, some level of forecast in order to influence the quantities to procure at a time. So how much is being ordered from suppliers? And how much of finished products, that is the, the items that have been produced, should also be transported or held in each market that the organization says. So without this, you are not mindful. We buy too high quantities and that can increase warehousing costs because we are going to experience too much inventory holding costs. And if we're also not mindful, we might be ordering for too small, you know, a quantity and also make it difficult to actually, you know, facilitate production in the process. And also in the markets that we need to send items to. And even in terms of our shipping, you have already said that sometimes we even consolidate items. And sometimes our ability to forecast well would influence the performance that we achieve in our consolidation of items as we ship. And this is very essential because consolidation is one of the opportunities for management to achieve lots of economies in our transportation. And so forecasting is essential to influence the logistics activities that are being carried out. The inventory control is also the area that actually ensures that the right items have been ordered, the right quantities. Now, we are seeing lots of quantitative models developed to enable us order for the most economic order quantity. Why? Because we see a lot of trade-off between holding costs and ordering costs plus other, you know, key components of, you know, you know, in terms of the inventory, like the stock out cost and the material cost. And so how do we manage it such that we can achieve a total balance amongst all the various costs involved in managing, involved in our inventory? And so inventory control is an aspect that deals with such trade-off. What do we do to achieve the balance, knowing that the cost of inventory is multifaceted? including the ordering, the holding, the material, and even the stock out cost. So it's an area that deals with that. So inventory management involves trading off the level of inventory held to achieve high customer service levels, where the cost of holding inventory, you know, including capital tied up in inventory, variable storage costs, and obsolescence. And this is what we do in operations to ensure that there's a balance amongst them. Usually, especially when it comes to the ordering cost and inventory cost, there seems to be a strong conflict in the sense that when you order for higher quantities with the, with the, with your, with the quest, um, when you want to achieve you know, economies, for example, in purchases, most organizations tend to purchase in higher quantities. And that is what is an aspect of the ordering cost, like transportation in terms of the purchasing itself, and plus other administrative costs. So the higher the quantity, the lower the ordering cost because it means that we will need to do only a few other, you know, orders. That is the number of orders we reduce as we increase the quantities that we order at a time. But the problem is that when the quantities we order also increase, it will increase the inventory holding cost because we are going to hold higher levels of inventory. Remember that demand depletes the inventory gradually. And so when you have ordered for higher quantities, you will need to keep these, you know, amounts of items within your warehouse. And that is going to increase cost. And also, if you also want to reduce the quantities ordered, obviously, the cost of holding inventory like obsolescence or let's say the rest cost, the capital cost, the service cost and the rent cost are going to reduce. However, we will need to also increase the number of orders. And by increasing the number of orders, it will also increase the ordering cost. So the question is that what do we do knowing that both costs are still a function of the entire inventory cost? And so that is where we find a way to balance the entire cost associated with inventory. So this is the domain of logistics that seeks to achieve the balance, you know, amongst all the various costs regarding inventory. Then we have material handling. Material handling is a broad area that encompasses virtually all aspects of all movement of raw materials, work in process, or what we call the work in progress, or finished goods within the plant and warehouse. So as we are moving items to ship them, we are handling them within the plants when we are producing, 
items must be moved from one place to another in the entire production process. And once items have been produced, they must be stocked as finished products. All these, during all these things, we see a lot of handling. And you know that the more we handle items, all things being equal, the higher risk of damages. And so how do you put a system in place to reduce the handling, yet speeding the entire process of shipping, distribution, warehouses? Because it takes more handling to also speed the process. So this is the aspect that deals with the handling to ensure that reduction is reduced, but at the same time, the movement is also swift enough to ensure that production goes on swiftly. And also items are shipped swiftly. Items are moved in the warehouse swiftly. All right. So a primary objective of material management is to eliminate handling wherever possible. We eliminate it in terms of reducing the contact, but, yet, um, but it is also essential to ensure for the flow. And that is why now, there's a lot of automation in material handling to ensure that larger quantities are moved at a time. The more we handle, you know, bulk, you know, movement, it means that the risk, the per unit risk associated with dealing with small quantities can be reduced. The more we touch individual items, the more risk the items will face in terms of damages plus other, you know, quality problems. But when we shift Let's say we move or handle items in bulk, we are able to reduce this risk level. And that is why there's been a lot of investment in packaging and automation to reduce, you know, handling wherever possible to ensure that items are also moving very swiftly. Now, other processing entails the systems of getting orders from customers and also checking on the status of orders, communicating to customers about them, filling the order making it available to the customer. And that is why now a lot of organizations are using advanced order processing systems like EDI to ensure that the entire process is done in a very shortest possible time as possible. You know, because throughout the entire process, if it is so much, you know, manual based, we can delay the entire process. So right from when customers are initiating orders, through till the time orders are received by the customer. How do we integrate the system with IT to speed the entire process? Now we see systems like the EDI. Others are even, you know, investing in electronic funds transfer, enterprise resource planning systems, barcoding, RFID, a lot of softwares, you know, and technologies available to speed the process. For example, when we know that an organization is using EDI, we know that the, the, the information is exchanged so swiftly within just a second or just a few seconds, everything is exchanged. And what even allows the system to be more flexible is that most of these softwares allows the information received by the supplier to be entered directly into the system. And being entered means that we are able to avoid a lot of mistakes from the manual process. And some of them also allow the management to perform simultaneous operations. That means that information is sent across all stakeholders and they also operate, you know, concurrently without necessarily waiting for items or functions to be done in terms which traditionally prolong the entire, you know, period of fulfilling orders. So how do you process order? During the processing of order, after you have received this and all that, you process it you know, speedily by the aid of this, you know, um, electronic system to make it very efficient and also very effective. And we have parts and service support. Logistics is also responsible for providing after sales service support because sometimes you sell products, like especially when you go to the automobile industry, they also provide parts to, you know, to their customers even after they have bought, you know, a product. They still have parts that they, they support them with in terms of providing after sales support to them. So when there are problems that require for repairs, they can fall on this organization to buy parts without going through so much difficulty. So this may include delivery of repair parts to dealers, stocking adequate parts, and also responding quickly to demand for the various repairs. And sometimes, there's a whole unit in organizations managing the entire function. 
especially for big organizations in the in the automobile industry yes they have a whole unit like this to manage the whole parts and service in order to support their clients so they don't go through a difficulty when they require repairs. Then packaging is also a domain in logistics. And in this domain, it includes the entire process involved in wrapping, you know, you know, a material around a consumer item. So we go through the science of it, the technology and the art of it. Because by science, we know that, you know, materials also react with other materials. And you need to go through that systematic process of inquiry to understand the material composition and how you know it will be effectively done and also the technology whether there's a technology available for a particular kind of packaging and the art is actually looking at the aesthetic issues and usually that is purely the domain of marketing whilst logistics does not neglect it entirely and so it is the whole coordinating system of you know transporting distributing storing items within any material handling how you package enables you to ship items swiftly or not your material handling and then also your warehousing and distribution so it is important to be designed for the warehouse configuration and materials handling equipment so you look at your warehouse configuration to develop the appropriate packages to enable that those who have understood the domain have invested very well in domain to ensure that goods arrive in the right condition some allow for cubic space utilization for example in your warehouse because they are robust enough to allow other items to be packaged on that and some also allow it for materials to be moved quickly because now we have already said that we want to reduce handling or minimize or avoid it as much as possible and sometimes when you have real packages you can do what we call the unitization by bringing smaller parts together to reduce or avoid the handling of materials. So packaging is one important domain in logistics and it, it performs so many functions I have, as I've already noticed some. Like fundamentally, it contains a product and allows, it makes it possible to handle that. It also allows for protection of items throughout in terms of transport, in terms of material handling, distribution and warehousing. Your ability to invest well in packaging will enable you to protect the item from spoilage, from damages, of solid, um, and also shrinkage as well. And sometimes even atmospheric conditions, you're able to protect the item from that because of the packages you have invested in that. All right. It also enables organizations to, you know, communicate with others because the packages themselves allow information to be written on them and now you know how we are using the barcoding the rfids in our warehousing in our transportation our material handling and other logistics activities and the packages also allow for such information to be provided and thus provide a linkage um, um, you know among the various partners of the supply chain and also it is able to enable organizations to provide what we call apportionment you know, industrial produce are in bulk, and so packages allow them to be reduced into manageable sizes that are more convenient for consumers, especially in terms of usage, and other partners within the supply chain, like the retailers and the wholesalers as well. And the unitization is what allows smaller units to be brought into, you know, into large quantities. Because having broken them even into smaller quantities, we need them usually in bulk in order to ship, and some consumers need them in large quantities. And also for the fact that we want to minimize material handling costs, the unitization allows us to ship items in bulk to reduce the per unit, you know, cost of you know, handling. And also it allows us within the entire process, it allows a lot of convenience. The package allows convenience in shipping items. So that there will be small, um, reduced rate of damage, convenience in handling items. Some packages allow us to send items more swiftly, even at the warehouses. Packaging, you know, allows a lot of convenience in handling items. And especially also for the fact that consumers also in terms of usage, when the package is a very, you know, well-designed package, it allows for convenience in usage. And so some items can be so fragile that without packages, it becomes 
so practically, you know, difficult or impossible to even move these items without getting damaged. And it is packaging that also enables for such convenience in handling throughout the logistics process. Then we have plant and warehouse size selection. So it is part of logistics to determine the location of the company's plants and warehouses. And it is one of the strategic decisions. Strategic in the sense that it is not just merely a short-term activity where we begin to just locate and relocate or build plants. And even to decide to own or not is a strategic decision. So mostly logistics will come in li um, li uh, liaison with marketing to understand, you know, the conditions in the market and decide whether the, the location is right or not or whether there has to be a relocation. And, and so we go through a lot of factors that we consider in the location process like proximity to supply, proximity to the market, availability of, you know, social amenities, you know, availability and cost of labor, for example, even government regulation in a particular environment are all parts, even the geographical condition, atmospheric conditions and what have you, can all influence the location of a particular plant or warehouse. And that is why it's a very strategic decision because usually once located or once a facility is built, within the short term, it is very difficult to actually change it. And that is why it's strategic. It's long term. So a lot of planning needs to go in to make a decision regarding that. That's the domain of logistics to see that. So it affects the cost of transporting raw materials, inbound and finished goods outbound, but also customer service level and speed of response. Where you have located is very, very important. And sometimes some organizations strategically locate to the to closer to suppliers so that once they have bought smaller quantities, they put the higher the, the bulk quantities and ship them to the production plant. So there are so many strategic options available in the location of these facilities and what have you. All right. And then when it comes to procurement, procurement is the domain of logistics that is in charge of purchasing materials and service from outside organizations to support the firm's operations from production to marketing, sales, and logistics. So um, traditionally, most people thought that procurement is just about going to the market to just buy items and bring. But we realized that it's a more strategic you know, activity than how we thought of it you know, previously. And now most organizations are utilizing strategies in the domain to have a very competitive supply chain. And so some are building very strong relationships, for example, with their suppliers in order for them to become competitive in the market. And so the domain includes how we select suppliers. So what process do we go through in selecting their suppliers? And how do we select suppliers? So sometimes there are a lot of considerations. For example, beyond the price and quality of the product, what other considerations are very necessary for the selection process? Some even look at their management composition, the expertise that are, are required. Some even look at how their finances are managed, for example, because of issues of risk. Some also look at their, you know, their investment in, for example, their capacity investment so that they see if they, are, they have the, the flexibility to adapt to market changes, for example. So these are some of the considerations beyond price and quality. Some even look at the sustainability efforts of suppliers, whether they have sustainability considerations, even in the selection of supplies. And all these are part of it. And organizations sit down to go through a whole selection process in selecting supplies. Now, the effort is directed towards building long-term relationships with your suppliers and even building the relationship to make it strategic where they can make very valuable input even in product development. And that is why most organizations now go through very, very systematic process in selecting their suppliers to make sure that the right and competitive suppliers are being, you know, are being sourced. Now, some are even sourcing from, you know, other, um, you know, global, you know, let's say global environment beyond their their national borders, or because some have very quality products, some have high levels of expertise, 
And all these are areas coming out for consideration. Now, it also involves negotiation of price. How do you go through? There are various methods that organizations go through in negotiation. And that is where, this is where your skill is very important. It involves both the science and art of it. You need to acquire, you need to possess the skill in negotiation. And how you go through. And sometimes people throughout negotiation even form, you know, consortium with other, you know, buyers to even buy in order to give them a higher leverage in negotiation for cheaper price. All these are considerations. And then we have supplier quality assessment. Having selected your suppliers, you do not just allow them to operate anyhow without monitoring them. So when organizations go through a lot of monitoring, they keep on assessing them in order to find out whether they are, you know, they are complying with the standards that have been set. And others also do what we call supply development. They try to develop their supply to be abreast with the current trends because you know that as they develop, they, they, it becomes you know, an opportunity for your own processes to be developed. For example, if uh, you want to use EDI, it becomes, you know, it, it becomes possible because your supplier is also using EDI, for example. Because when he's not ready to use EDI, you can't force and use EDI with him. And even you know the compatibility issues involved in the usage of the EDI system. And that is why we make all these considerations in procurement. And so procurement is now more of a strategic function than what traditionally was perceived to be in terms of just going to the market to buy items and bring them on board. And now the domain of tracking and transformation actually looks at how goods must be shipped right from the point of origin to the point of consumption and also includes the disposal as well. And so we did the entire process of that. It includes how we go through the selection of mode and even within modes, even careers, how we go through selection of them. Different modes have their own performance in terms of cost, in terms of capacity, in terms of speed, flexibility, and other variables. And so depending on your market conditions, you consider to choose the right kinds of modes. And even when it comes to, for example, road transport, there are different careers performing and so having chosen a road transport you may have to further sit down and analyze the performance of different you know careers to select the one that will support your competitive you know your competitive objective and also it involves routing that is determining the right route giving different kinds of routes which one will be the best to ensure for service and also ensure for optimization at the same time and then also ensuring that the, the, you comply with regulations within the country that are governing the whole area. Then the selection of careers, as I've also mentioned. There are also some of the strategic decisions that have to be made. Sometimes people buy their own trucks or sometimes they decide to also outsource to a third party. And these are all considerations, strategic decisions you have to make, whether to manage it your own fleet by yourself or you want to outsource it and it is the largest logistics cost and that is why now organizations are paying a very good attention to these areas a lot of people are now concentrating on their core competencies and just outsourcing the domain to you know third parties who have the high expertise and those who are able to ourselves to very good you know you know three pls are able to perform very well in terms of both responsiveness and efficiency and of course it is not without its own disadvantages but if it is managed well you can achieve a lot of more advantages than even disadvantages and then the area of warehousing and storage is where we keep items it is the function that manages the storage of items so items must be stored and i've already explained that either items are flowing continuously or at some point in time it is stored it must be stored to facilitate production. It must be stored because the time of demand and supply may not be at the same time. It must be stored also because the geographical locations uh, of the various partners are different. And so storage is essential. And we also know other variables because sometimes we want to take opportunities in the market. For example, when we speculate possible price increases, we store items or sometimes 
when we face seasonal demand and supply, we also want to keep items in order to meet those seasonality without necessarily having to increase capacity. All right. And so how do we use the warehousing to support both place and time utility? It's very important. And so how do we do that? And that is what we use the warehousing to support it. It's also one of the areas that can attract a lot of cost. And so there are a lot of strategic decisions involved in terms of the layout, the design, the ownership, the automation, and location. For example, how do you lay out your facility? How you lay out your facility or your warehouse is important. The layout means the arrangements you have put in place, how you have laid it to support your own operations. And then we have the design. How have you designed it to contain items? And it depends whether if you are looking at a more of a permanent warehouse or a distribution center or a cross-docking facility, the design will differ because of the throughput. You know that the velocity is higher for different warehouses and other warehouses, right? For different warehouses, sorry. And you know that, for example, when you are taking distribution centers, items move into and come out more quickly um, or often than for most warehouses that provide a somewhat permanent you know function and so that would influence the design usually the design that facilitates a higher velocity will be different from the design that facilitates a low velocity or throughput time and then the ownership whether to make it a private or a public is also a strategic decision depending on marketing conditions all right and then when you also want to consider issues of automation and how to handle materials over there. Now we see a lot of um, the use of robotics even in warehouses for picking and packing of items. All these are parts of the decision. What kind of systems are put in place to ensure for all this? You need to find out whether it's going to be purely based on automation or a mix and why. Then the location of the warehouse, as we said previously, are you going to locate it closer to supply or closer to the market or in an area that would take advantage of, you know, very, you know, um, motivating subsidies by government or other variables? You will need to consider that. Then reverse logistics is also the domain of logistics. That is, that is taxed with the activity or the function of managing the reverse flows. The reverse flows within the supply chain. And items flow backwards for various reasons as we have noted it could be because they are poor quality or there's a problem or they have to be reversed because we need to recycle them or we may need to use them we call that asset um, you know retains for example when you look at the beverage you know industry like some organizations would want their bottles to be retained to be reused and we also look at disposal activities some allow reverse flows in order to have their own way of disposing of plus other various, you know, considerations. All right. So it is the activity that manages it. The forward flow relatively is easier to manage than the reverse flow. And in the reverse flow, how to even, you know, design the supply chain structure is all, uh, is it might even pose as a challenge. And sometimes some supply chain partners are not very, you know, they do not respond very well. They are not very receptive to re reverse. And so you need to put in the, the measures to motivate them to link up and also to ensure that the flows are being done efficiently and effectively. So returns may take place because of a problem with the performance of the item, as I've said, or simply because the customer changed his mind. So return goods handling can be very complex and very complex. And one of the ways to reduce such complexity is through a very good and simple design and also to reduce costs is to ensure for a lot of collaboration among the various partners within the supply chain so the movement of a product backward costs nearly as much as nine times as high as moving the same product forward and that is why under normal circumstances most organizations do not want items to be retained and that is why you need to do a lot of gatekeeping and avoidance to reduce the incidence of returns within the logistics system. Some returns has to be because it's been planned to be returned, like the ones we reuse, we recycle, or we dispose of ourselves. 
But beyond these issues of defect, issue that a customer has changed his mind, issue of wrong products being served, uh, sent over supply. If we do a lot of gatekeeping and avoidance, we will be able to reduce the incidence of this in order to reduce the complexity and cost associated with the returns. All right, that brings us to the end of this model. In this model, we have learned that logistics management is that part of the supply chain process. And we know that it involves a managerial function, including planning, implementing, and controlling. And we've already said that it does that to ensure for the flow of storage of goods, services, and related information. But that has to be done in the most efficient and effective manner. And we have understood that it is not just limited to an internal organizational activity, but it is throughout the entire you know, supply chain, right from the point of origin to the point of consumption. We have understood that the logistics management must be managed to emphasize the supply chain strategy because the overall purpose is to conform to customer requirements. That means necessarily that Whatever we do in logistics must be reflective of the customer priority. We have understood that logistics also applies the integrative approach that we have seen as what we use in the supply chain. Because in the supply chain, we see a network of various organizations or activities. Therefore, the integrative approach will allow for the supply chain partners to be well fused or synchronized to ensure for efficiency and effectiveness. We have understood the origin of logistics, how it came from the military, and how through that even improved or increased the recognition of the subject matter. We have already also understood that competitive pressures, information technology, profit, leverage, and also channel power are all factors that have also influenced the development of logistics management over time. We have also understood that According to Lambert, Stock and Lambert, there are 14 major logistics activities, and we've looked at some of them to include customer service, demand forecasting, procurement, traffic and transportation, packaging, reverse logistics, demand forecasting, logistics communication, plant and warehouse, you know, size selection, warehousing and storage, and other logistics activities. And we also learned about the five rights of logistics. Don't forget that we must send the right product at the right place, at the right, uh, at the right time, in the right condition, and also at the right cost. Having understood this, we have provided a very good overview of the subject matter. Now we are going to look at the next model, which is our next model two. And in model two, we are going to look at the role of logistics in both the organization and also in the economy. Thank you and see you as we go through model two the next time we meet thank you hello hello i'm done for model one Yes, so I'm tired, but let me do it too. When I finish, I'll go. I'll come and do the rest later. Has Dr. Muntaka left? Is he still there? There. Yes. 